there are some attributes that are special to the C-sharp compiler. In the next few videos, I want to cover those attributes in coding. It's very common to have me debugging method. To have some methods that do some debugging stuff, like trace debugging stuff. I'll call it that instead. And string, we'll call this the message to trace, like so. And then in here, I'm just going to say, hey, I'm um, debugging like that, and then tack on message to trace. So if we're debugging our code or shipping it out to some test servers and that sort of thing, we'd we'd probably want to write out to a file instead of the console, but hopefully you get the idea. We'd have this trace debugging stuff, but in the end, when we ship our code, you know, say we we're going to package it in a box or put it up for download or whatever, having it do any tracing on the consumer's computer doesn't make any sense. Okay, so we'd want to turn off this debugging stuff. All right, but in the meantime, I'm just going to call it and say we are debugging here. It looks like I'm struggling to type my G's on the end here, but whatever. I'm going to control F5 this, and hopefully the output is straightforward to you. We call it from here. It prints here. No big deal. Well, C Sharp borrowed some, well, it borrowed a lot of stuff from C++, but one of the things that borrowed from C++ is conditional compilation, which basically means based on certain conditions, we are either going to compile some code in or compile some code out. For example, I can do a preprocessor symbol up here, and just FYI, if you know what a preprocessor is, C Sharp actually doesn't have a preprocessor. The compiler does all the preprocessing, but the syntax is still the same. I'm going to pound define a symbol. It's totally up to me what the symbol is, and the syntax, the convention of it is all caps with underscores, but it could be whatever you want. I'm going to say, we be debugging, debug, debug, we be debugging. And uh, if this symbol's defined, then yeah, we want to do all of our debugging stuff. So down here, here's the special attribute I was telling you about that C-sharp uh, will respect and uh, change your code for you appropriately. It's called the conditional attribute. Control dot to get the menu. Enter to get the using up at the top. And conditional attribute takes a string. It's a condition string. And the condition string is basically the symbol that you defined. If you do define at the top of the file a symbol like so. Okay, so let me see if I can explain this a little bit better. We're defining a symbol, we be debugging. And when I say pound define symbol, I'm just saying, hey, define it. It exists. Right? I don't have to define it as anything else, it's just it exists. For example, my brother Jerry, I could talk about him all day long, but he actually doesn't exist. I don't have any brothers to be honest. But I could talk about him if I was having a hard day and I needed to talk about my imaginary friends. But then I could talk about uh, my teacher, Dennis. I did have a teacher. His name was Dennis, and he actually does exist. Okay, so just by this pound define, I'm saying, hey, it exists. All right, and then when C Sharp sees this condition, it's going to say, hey, if this symbol is defined, which it is, then sure enough, we're going to allow uh, calls to this method to happen. So I'm going to control F5 this. The output is identical to what we had before because because this code was compiled in. All right, but if I come around and say, you know what, I'm not going to define it anymore. It's gone. It's dead to me. Then when C Sharp gets here, it's going to say, oh, well, this method, as far as we're concerned, doesn't exist. So I am going to delete the calls to this method. There's only one in this file, but it deletes all the calls to the method. If I control F5 this, you see there's no output because main has nothing in there. But just to prove to you that the compiler literally vaporizes this, I'll put it back in. And if the compiler doesn't vaporize it, we'll see output. Otherwise, we won't see any output. And sure enough, there's no output. The compiler saw that we be debugging is not defined, and so it vaporized this call right here. All right, this is called conditional compilation. Uh, something that came from C++, and that's quite handy. We could have tons of debugging code, but when we ship our product, we don't want our debugging code to be shipped with our product, so we could do some conditional compilation and vaporize out all of the calls. But I do want to point out that the compiler vaporizes the calls. It doesn't vaporize the actual code. It's not oh, Right now, we be debugging is not defined. I'm actually going to delete this line. And the compiler only deletes the call site. It doesn't delete the method itself. 
let me build, let me uh, prove that to you. I'm going to save this. Let's open up uh, the reflector. I'm going to compile this code file and show you in the reflector that our trace debugging stuff survived, but the call was vaporized. So let's get in here, main class, expand methods. You can see, sure enough, our method is still there, but the call does not exist in main anymore. You see main here, trace debugging stuff. The call is gone. So you may be wondering, well, that's kind of a waste. There's all this code here, and if I'm shipping my code, it seems like I'd want this vaporized too. And I would say you're correct. So what's the best way to go about that? Well, all your debug code, sure, call into it from your production code, that's fine, but all the actual debugging code put in a separate project, compile it to its own DLL, and then reference that DLL. And when you ship your actual end product, be sure it works correctly without that DLL referenced. You can set up some build configurations. If I go build, build configuration manager, you can conditionally set up which uh, DLLs you're referencing. And just make sure you don't ship your debugging code, that all that code packages into one DLL. Don't ship that with your final product. Uh, another question you may have is, why doesn't the compiler just vaporize it? Well, I don't know exactly, but I have a hunch. And my hunch is, I could have other files and other projects that want to call this debugging code. And if the compiler vaporizes the code, then I can't call it. Sure, I don't want to call it in here because I didn't define the symbol, but maybe there's other parts of my project that do want to use this code. All right, now the code's private, but even with reflection, I can get in there into private stuff. I don't know why I'd want to go that far, but it probably makes more sense to make it public. But now that it's public, other files in my project could probably want to use this code. However, this in this file, I'm trying to optimize and delete just the call site. So that's my hunch why the compiler leaves that in there. I also want to show you that you don't have to necessarily pound define up, up at the top. You certainly can, and it has its place, but generally you want this to be all or nothing project-wide. Okay, you could have up to 10, 20, 100 C CS files inside of your project, and going through all your files, putting this pound of fine up at the top would be a pain. So what you can do instead is go to properties on your project, and, oh, right there, you can see I was kind of messing around with it before. Conditional compilation symbols, I'm going to paste it right there. And that defines it globally for the entire project. Control S to save this. And then, even though we didn't define it up here at the top, we defined it globally. We will see our trace statement print. I run the program and you see it's, it's traced right there. So there you go. That's the conditional attribute.